what is the point of presidential elections? Or why do people run for president? We're about to answer that question. Hey guys, I'm Samuel Arms. I am the political strategist here at Cardone Digital Ventures. And today we're going to go over what is the goal of some of these presidential campaigns? What are the goals for running for president of the United States? Specifically, what are RFK Jr.'s goals? If we look back at the Republican primary, we can kind of walk through each different candidate's set of goals of why we think they were running for president. Of course, a lot of them would claim that they were running to dethrone Donald Trump, but that is not the case for all of them. For example, if we look at the Tim Scott campaign, who is apparently possibly Trump's VP pick, we don't know yet, his whole goal was to actually just strengthen his seat in South Carolina. There have been multiple reports and multiple articles about how Tim Scott simply used his campaign, his presidential campaign cash, to funnel money to his consultants in his home state, strengthening his home position. DeSantis's story was a little bit different. DeSantis, I think, honestly believed that he could dethrone Donald Trump, but that was probably one of the reasons why his presidential campaign failed so much, is his goal was unrealistic from the start. If DeSantis's goal was to simply just embolden and empower himself even more, he would have just used his campaign to gain cash and maybe build influence throughout America, the United States, and specifically Florida. But unfortunately, due to various campaign guffaws, he ended up failing and had hurting his brand. And you can see that in multiple reports about various infighting within his presidential campaign, specifically his super PAC never backed down. But it gets even more interesting when you're thinking about why people run for president because there's a lot of jockeying around these presidential campaigns. For example, there was a leaked memo within the DeSantis campaign that the Tim Scott campaign actually ended up bringing to the media's attention. The whole goal of Tim Scott's campaign wasn't necessarily just to embolden, say, his position in South Carolina, but it could have been to help Trump defeat DeSantis from the very start. The Tim Scott campaign got this leaked memo, shared it with the media, and helped sow chaos within the DeSantis campaign so that no one knew who to really trust. When we look at people like Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley's strategy was always a Democratic strategy, and I think a lot of people later on realized that. We all know that Nikki Haley wasn't running for president of the United States as a Republican. She was really running as a Democrat in order to hurt Donald Trump's chances. Even though we knew from the start that Nikki Haley would have zero chance of becoming president and overthrowing Donald Trump, if you look at even some of her voters and some of her donors, they were all Democrats. So you have to ask yourself, what was Nikki Haley's presidential campaign for? What was its purpose? Nikki Haley still ended up getting just under 100 electoral votes or 100 delegates for the upcoming RNC conference. If, if Donald Trump were unable to run for president, Nikki Haley would have the most delegates, and that's probably what she was banking on. But really, she was working with the Democratic Party, I think, in order to hurt Donald Trump from the right. And she may have done a good job. If you look at some of the primary states just recently, Donald Trump is earning about 80% of the vote, but there's still about 20% that he's not winning. And in the next presidential election coming up in November, we know that some of these margins, especially in states like Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota are going to be incredibly small. And that cuts both ways for both Trump and Biden. And then we look at Vivek, who's probably the best example of why you might run a presidential campaign. Vivek knew from the start that he was not going to be president of the United States. But now he's a household name and everybody knows who he is. And in fact, he played it off very well. He used his campaign not only for name and brand identity, but to get closer to Donald Trump. And now Vivek is one of his top spokespersons. He was able to prove himself as a good order, and now he will most likely be holding a cabinet position if Trump wins in November. But then we look back and then we think, okay, that's the Republican field. What about more interesting candidates like RFK Jr.? Why is RFK Jr. running for president? Now, if he actually wanted to win, it's my belief that he would have just stayed as a Democrat. I think he would have had a lot more influence trying to actually unseat Joe Biden and causing havoc and chaos within the DNC. 
This is proven by the fact that the Democratic Party had to move their first primary from the state of New Hampshire to South Carolina because it was almost guaranteed that RFK Jr. was going to win New Hampshire handily. In fact, I have no doubts that he would have. But the fact is, is if he wanted to overthrow Biden, most likely the best chance he would have had was to remain a Democrat. But that was not the case. RFK Jr. earlier in his run decided to become an independent, which if you read some of the very first articles of why he did that, I especially believed at first that it was actually going to be hurting Donald Trump, that a lot of RFK Jr.'s voters would actually poll from the Donald Trump camp. However, over time, that seems to have changed. And one of the number one things you have to do when you're looking at the political tea leaves is even if you yourself don't have access to the data, you can look at how different people in their parties are reacting to a certain candidate. For example, the DNC is now doing everything it can to quash RFK Jr.'s presidential run while the Republicans are doing absolutely nothing. What does that tell you? So my original impression that RFK Jr. was actually going to be pulling votes from Donald Trump seems to not be so true, at least if I'm looking at the actions of the big players, which are both the Republican and the Democratic Party. It is getting so bad that there's a slew of nonprofits like Citizens to Save Our Republic and the Lincoln Project that are now going after RFK and trying to get him off the ballot in multiple states. You even see this in Nevada. One of the reasons, and Nevada is now a key state by the way, and recent polling has just put Nevada's Senate seat from a Dem-leaning Senate pickup to a possible toss-up, which means it could go either Democrat or Republican. So with that in mind, it was of much importance that the Democrats get RFK off the ballot in Nevada. And they did that by saying, even though he qualified, that he did not have a vice presidential candidate, which is part of the reason why he had to pick Nicole Shanahan so early as his running mate. And it just so happens that Nicole Shanahan is one of his largest backers when it comes to funding his campaign to get on multiple ballots in multiple different states. So what is RFK's actual strategy though? Why is he running for president? Like I said at the beginning, I thought it was originally to ensure that Donald Trump wouldn't win. But now it's like that he is running specifically to kill Biden's chances. And maybe this is because of a specific vendetta he has against Biden and the Biden administration. Certainly there are some ties there that are disagreeable. You can look at RFK Jr.'s recent family photo where Joe Biden is in the middle of the photo and RFK Jr. was not even invited. You can look at the fact that Biden is not allowing RFK Jr. secret service protection, making RFK Jr. spend tons of money on his own secret service agents. But then you can even see this most interestingly when RFK Jr. was being censored on social media and that is still happening. What was very fascinating to me was most recently during an interview with CNN, RFK Jr. for the first time pivoted around his whole goal for his campaign. Originally, he used to say that he was the best option out there to beat Donald Trump. But when the CNN reporter asked him, who do you think is a bigger threat to democracy, Donald Trump or Joe Biden, he said Joe Biden, which is the first time that he has said specifically that Joe Biden is worse than Donald Trump. And he quoted a lot of things in that interview, which you can see here. Listen, I can make the argument that President Biden is a much worse threat to democracy. And the reason for that is President Biden is the first candidate in history, the first president in history that has used the federal agencies to censor political speech, so to censor his opponent. I, you know, I can say that because I just won a case in the Federal Court of Appeals and now before the Supreme Court that shows that he started censoring not just me. 37 hours after he took the oath of office, he was censoring me. No president in the country has ever done that. The greatest threat in democracy is not somebody who questions election returns, but a president of the United States who used the power of his office to force the social media companies, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, to open a portal and give access to that portal to the FBI, to the CIA, to the IRS, to CISA, to NIH, to censor his political critics. President Biden, for the first 
first president in history to use the secret, his power over the Secret Service, to deny Secret Service protection to one of his political opponents for political reasons. He's weaponizing the federal agencies. Those are really critical threats. So why is RFK Jr. running for president? It is not my belief that his presidential run is actually to hurt Biden and not necessarily help Trump, but to be a pain point for the Democratic Party, which has clearly rejected him. It gets interesting when you realize that his VP pick, Nicole Shanahan, was a huge Democratic Party donor. She's about as leftist as you can get. She was formerly married to Sergey Brin, the co-founder of Google, who is a huge Democrat, huge Democratic donor, and has advised mul multiple Democratic presidential campaigns. And now she herself was a donor to not only Joe Biden's campaign in 2020, but to multiple causes around Black Lives Matter, as well as efforts to defund the police and multiple pro-abortion issues. So she's a very progressive candidate which makes it interesting that she would tie herself to someone like an RFK Jr. who is now just trying to make the Democratic Party's life even harder and almost ensure that Joe Biden does not win the presidency. She is also the main reason that he is going to be on multiple ballots. So far, RFK Jr. is looking like he is going to be on at least five ballots so far, with the most recent one being North Carolina. And this is all under a separate party. Now, Nevada and North Carolina specifically are swing states. Both of them flip back and forth between having Democratic governors and Republican governors, and more so in the Senate. And presidential elections for both tend to be a toss-up, with North Carolina mostly leaning Republican and Nevada mostly leaning Democrat. But in the current situation that we are in, and with 2024 going to be decided by the slimmest of voting margins, with RFK being on just those two ballots, could influence the outcome of the election for Trump. If RFK Jr. is able to get on the ballot in other swing states like Colorado, Arizona, Minnesota, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, it will be a huge problem and a huge threat to the Democratic Party as a whole. So what does this mean? The biggest lesson to take away from this is that there's a difference between power and influence, but they are both equally important. Power is the ability to actually make the decision, but influence is the ability to influence the decision maker. So RFK Jr. may not ever be president of the United States, it's highly doubtful, but he's going to be one of the most influential people in the 2024 election because he himself could decide the outcome, whether it is for Biden or for Donald Trump.